Okay. So, at this point, you've got to figure out what sort of image you want to carve on your wax. And we're going to do a general transfer uh, using the, the pokey tool for stippling. Um, but you've got to figure out something simple that's easy to carve, not so simple that you're bored with it, but not so complicated that you get overwhelmed. Uh, you know what your limitations are. So I'm going to go with the moon because it's a simple shape, and it's pretty easy to know what the moon is or just a planet. It's just got, you know, craters in it. So we're going to type moon into uh, the browser and just select images. And uh, this image looks good. You want to pick something that's monochromatic, right? Uh, <laughs> just black and white. If you have all those colors, it's really hard to figure out which values you're going to need. So when you're taking your image, you can either just drag and drop it onto your desktop, or if for some reason the image won't come off, you can always screenshot it. So for Apple, that is Command-Shift-4, and then you get a cursor option to sort of select everything in the region that you're looking for. Um, you can do the same thing with the Windows computer. You're just copying and pasting to your clipboard, and then you'll do your editing through the bitmap program. But uh, since we're on a Mac, we'll do it with a Mac, and we'll do it assuming that uh, the internet did not let you just steal it. So uh, this is our screenshot, the one we just took. We're going to open it up, and I'm going to do a couple of quick edits here. So I'm going to select markup, and there's something comparable like this in bitmap where you can do a drag selection, and we want to switch to the elliptical selection, okay, like so. And I'm holding down shift so that this thing cuts a relatively uniform circle, because as much as I'd like to think I can drag a good one, uh, I probably can't. So I've got a border around the perimeter. Um, it just needs to be loose so I know roughly where I'm drawing my line, and then I'm going to go and invert my selection. Okay, so right here, I can press Command Shift I to invert my selection, or I can use the Edit drop down menu to do so. And then I'm just going to delete everything that's not my moon. Now, in order to carve something that's got, you know, relatively fine detail, you can see these areas are. A lot of low relief would be the black spots, and the high spots would be the white sections. And so it's easier to get an idea of what you're doing by adjusting those settings. And the first thing I'll do is I'll just up the contrast. And I'll try and find an area where I can still see the uh, high spots that are pertinent, but all of the low spots become very, very obvious when I need to carve down into. And then you can either drop your exposure down to get a little more, and then push your contrast back up to to kind of delineate those two, or fiddle with the levels in a way that makes sense to you uh, on either of the sliders. But I think I'm I'm pretty satisfied with this. I'd like to see full white and, and black if possible, so I'm going to bring the exposure level back up, and then I'll chase the contrast back just a little so I have an idea of where that gray area is, that mid-level of my carving. Okay. So once I have all that done, um, I've got a pretty good moon, and I, I'm quite happy with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press Edit, select All, which is Command-A or Control-A, and then uh, you can either open up a, a random blank screenshot file if you have that on a Macintosh, um, and that would work like this. You would just say File, Duplicate. And this will be my moon options, right? So I can copy this, right? So I'm going to hit File, Copy, and I can paste this here. And I can print straight from here, but the problem is when you print straight from here, your object's going to be a certain size, right? And um, when you're printing for wax carving, generally, if you're doing a belt buckle, it's like three inches. So if you're doing something on a ring, it's going to be an inch or less. So 11 inches of paper is a lot of paper to do the moon. So you end up needing to make it a little, little smaller. Uh, so let's go back, and we've got our sort of object here. And what, what we can do is we can make a couple copies of it. 
So I've just hit uh, paste several times. Uh, that is control V for those of you who are not tech savvy. Do not take it personal. I know I don't. All right. And so you want to make sure that you're not distorting your moon when you do this. So I always try and make sure that when I've done that, uh, it's not distorted. So usually holding shift will resolve that, but if that's not the case, you can always use a different program. For this one, I am going to open PowerPoint, which works out fine. It's just dumb enough to do what I need. Of course, it will ask you if you want titles, and if you're misusing the program like I often do, the answer is always no. So here's my large moon, and we're going to paste another one down. And we're just going to keep making them smaller. So that when we print a single page, right, I'm holding shift down as I scale all of these. Control V. I'm trying to find a moon that is the appropriate size for whatever it is I'm trying to accomplish. And so I don't know what that scale is, and you can either print out 100 copies, you know, just slowly scaling it down to the right bit, or what you can do is pre-scale a bunch of these little moons and then when you print it out you'll know that one of these will be the scale that you want and uh, as much as I'm not a big fan of the guess and check method occasionally you just don't know what's gonna work with what you're trying to accomplish so each time I press paste I just shift scale it down a little bit more and give yourself enough room to get in there with scissors right Okay, so now we have our object, and we're just going to go print it. And I'm pretty sure all of these are too big, so when we go, um, one thing that confuses PowerPoint is it tries to do all these default settings, so what I do is I just go Edit, Select All, and then right-click, group all these things as one thing and then you can right click again and save the picture as uh, just a PNG file and we'll call this moon options okay and then we'll minimize this since we're not using it and we're not using moon options edited so hopefully that one's still there and apparently they were both named the same thing. So what I need to do now is go back into my PowerPoint and then save this picture again as moon options. Oops. And we should save this to the desktop. Save, replace, and we'll minimize that. We're going to open this file. So you'll see that it's got a gray background, which means it doesn't actually know of any data behind the moon, which is the nice thing about PowerPoint is you can just take kind of your image that you've scrapped, and uh, you don't have all the background printing just wasting ink and kind of confusing as you go to do your, your next operation. So we're going to press Print. These are all too big, so I'm going to go to scale, and I'm going to take auto-rotate off. I think auto-rotate is appropriate in many cases, but you always want to check. So when it's at 50%, we don't need auto-rotate on, and it gives you a sense if this is 8 inches, right, this still might be too big. So we could go down to 40 or even 30 to get a reasonable sized moon for what we're trying to accomplish. So now I'm going to go off to my printer and print this. So when I print off these files, usually what I'll do is once I get the paper copy and I test it, 
to do what I expect it to. Uh, I'll label the file so, like, moon options and 40% worked, right? So, I've got a couple of options. I'm satisfied with all the different sizes, and so we'll transfer that to the wax. But then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to relabel the file moon options 40% print scale. Okay. And then if I need to go do this again, I know that my moon options was at 40% when I went to print it, and uh, that's sufficient. Okay, so I'm going to close that file, and that's it for the video.